Hey, welcome to what we call Sylvie answering interesting questions. Um, I found this question on Reddit and I found it very interesting. It's actually something that I think about a lot and have um, talked to people about and maybe even written about a few times. Um, the question on Reddit was that um, this person actually used to play soccer um, and feels like they never got as good at soccer as they felt they could have, but now they're really, really into martial arts and Muay Thai and they're wondering what to look at uh, when they watch Muay Thai fights in order to improve themselves um, in their Muay Thai. Uh, the reason I bring up the soccer part of it is that uh, I thought it was a really, really interesting example and a good example that when watching a soccer game, if you just watch the ball and like where it's going on the field, um, you don't actually see how the players are working. Um, I used to play soccer as a kid. Uh, one of my older brothers is really, really into soccer, so I watched the World Cup every four years, was like really into it. Um, the German team, while they're really, really good, are so mechanical that oftentimes if you're like just watching their formations, it's uh, instructional but not so inspirational kind of thing. And you can get that same kind of thing um, in the way that you watch Muay Thai. Uh, it's not a team sport, but in seeing kind of like how a soccer team works together and like how they create the formations and the structures and the uh, kind of strategies that they use in a game is far more instructional than watching the ball. Um, I have given the example before when usually I use this in the gym. So someone who's um, either taking a private instruction and they kind of seem to be missing what their instructor is trying to teach them. Um, or maybe they're kind of like trying to figure out a technique, but I can tell that they're not digesting it properly. Um, I use the example that it's like looking at a bullet uh, rather than where the gun is pointing. Um, a lot of people like when they're looking at a punch or something, they look at the fist and then like where the fist lands. That's not how that plays out. You should actually be looking at uh, the torso and how uh, the weight shifts around it. You should be looking at the knees, the flex in the feet. Um, for me, the most important thing when trying to understand a technique or watching it for the first time, one is to look at it as a whole shape um, in the same way that like you know the letter R by its shape. The instant you see it, just the shape of the letter R, you know what sound that makes once you know how to read. Um, it's the same thing. You look at the overall shape of um, a fighter or a technique and then you start looking at these little details. So like. Um, for me, I look at the feet first because that shows you um, where the weight is being transferred and it shows kind of the execution of the technique in how the weight shifts. It shows you distance. The bend in the knees and the hips with the rotation will tell you a lot how center the body stays and whether or not the weight is shifting up from the chest or whether it stays kind of curled. All of these things are really good things to look at when you're learning, like when you're in front of an instructor and you're trying to figure out how they're doing the technique that they're trying to show you. You can also look at it when you're watching fighters and totally geek out on it. So uh, this question on Reddit was specifically asking, when watching fights, what do I look for in order to improve myself? Um, the cool thing about this is that you can watch the same fight like 40 times and just look at different things each time. Uh, Kevin, my husband, has recently gotten really into like color palettes and so we'll watch movies together and we'll watch them several times but looking for different things. So um, if you watch a movie like, I don't know, uh, what's a good example of what we just watched? Um, you can watch a movie that's basically just an action movie and so you like watch the action and the plot and things like this but then you watch it again and you see what palettes being used in each scene in order to kind of give an emotion to that set. It's the same thing as how like the score in a film uh, will kind of guide you towards the emotions that are trying to be set in that scene. They do that with color as well. So <laughs> that's a film example. But when you're watching a Muay Thai fight, uh, for me, I super geek out when I'm watching like my favorite fighters. So if I'm watching like a Karahat fight or um, I get really excited from Wong Chinoy because he's really scary, I'll watch the fight looking at how the two fighters are playing with distance. Like, how are they taking the advantage with the distance? So someone like Silla Patai, for example, wants to juggle you and just keep you on the end of his teeth, like not now, not now, not now, and then he lets you in and he kicks you and scores a huge point. He's playing with distance on the far end of that. Samart is also someone like that. Somrock is incredible at that. Very tall, never comes forward. You can also look at Dern fighters. Those are the fighters who are pressuring and coming in. 
Um, someone like Long Sawan, for example, is basically drowning his opponent <laughs> at all times. Um, Lam Moon is actually quite tall, but he turns, he comes forward, so he's like, his ranges are really interesting because of his height and length, but also being a knee fighter, so the way he um, closes distance and then holds distance at the shorter ranges is really interesting to watch. So in those instances, I would recommend watching the two fighters um, and how they're each trying to govern that distance. Um, watch their feet, watch their footwork, see like how they pivot off at angles, see how they move backwards and post before firing a shot, how they're pushing someone before uh, firing a shot on the way in. Um, pay attention to whether fighters like to stay near the ropes or whether they like to be in the middle of the ring. If you're watching Thai fighters, um, there are fighters who are absolutely incredible against the ropes and they will just kind of drift from corner to corner and rope to rope and have their opponent kind of follow them around in that way. Um, and then there are fighters like Diesel Noy who forces you into the ropes um, and then just destroys you or someone like Yod Kun Pan who will kill you <laughs> in the middle of the ring <laughs> regardless of where you're standing. Um, so you can also look at things like um, who among fighters keeps a very solid center line. There are fighters who are very like rotational around their center line like this, whereas there are other fighters who kind of glide up. Their kind of rhythm and um, body shapes are kind of more like a wave like this. Um, and then there are others that are very like kind of pendulous like this. Um, those are really, really cool things to look at because you can see how those characteristics or nuances really affect um, a fighter's style. It's, it's really what gives them the kind of um, impression that they have. Uh, if you like watching modern fighters, <laughs> if you're not going to geek out on the golden age like I do, uh, if you want to watch modern fighters, um, it can be a little bit trickier because the, the matchmaking is, is not um, always the most interesting in terms of like distance and stuff like this. But if you're going to be watching someone like Sanchai on Thai Fight, um, because he's so much better than his opponents all the time, and he's basically just kind of messing with them through 98 to 99% of the fight. Looking at how he stays close, but still uh, creates a kind of feeling like he's super evasive um, with his opponents is really interesting to watch. So watch his feet um, uh, in his little like shuffle step type of thing is, is a very obvious thing, but watch his feet at all times, like how close they are to his opponent's foot. Um, see where his upper body goes right before he fires a shot and then where he is on the end of that shot to see like how he's keeping his balance and things like that. Um, I really like watching boxers, even though I'm not a boxer. Um, I really like that because the way that they um, find angles, because uh, boxing is really like half of Muay Thai. It's the, uh, you can only strike from the upper body. So the legs have to do so much work in terms of like where they're positioning you in order to set up for um, power and angles and things like that to me is uh, really instructive and interesting to watch. Um, and you can totally apply them back and forth to each other, which is really cool. So <laughs> that is my advice on one, uh, what to look for when you are being taught something, uh, where to look when someone is instructing you and how to understand a technique. And two, uh, all the different ways that you can watch and rewatch um, a fight and a fighter in order to kind of digest and comprehend and then apply to yourself um, different strategies and angles and techniques um, and like uh, impressions that fighters have in their fights. Uh, if you guys would like to see other videos of Sylvie answering interesting questions, uh, we have a playlist. You can check that out there and uh, on my YouTube. <laughs> and uh, yeah, if you see any interesting questions or if you have interesting questions, you can post them on the Muay Thai Roundtable Forum. We'll put a link in the description for that. Uh, and I'm always looking through Reddit and finding interesting questions like this and uh, just giving my two cents on it. Thanks, guys. Hey, so a bit of an addendum from the first part of my answer to this question. <laughs> Kevin was listening and he came out and he said that uh, I should address watching contemporary stadium Muay Thai because, uh, <laughs> because my references are all like golden age Muay Thai. They're from like 30, 40 years ago. Uh, so talking about how to watch contemporary Muay Thai, which I do. I watch like Channel 7 and Omnoy and stuff like this um, on weekends. So when I'm watching contemporary Muay Thai, I don't watch it the same way that I watch Golden Age because you kind of can't. But if you're going to be watching contemporary Muay Thai in order to um, look for things that can really 
aid you in your own development as a fighter. Again, looking at distance to me is um, one of the main things to focus on. Um, it's very different looking at distance uh, on like modern Muay Thai shows because they tend to just kind of like stay at the same distance most of the time. There's there's much less of a, in Thai they call it luk lap, which is to like go forward and backward kind of ebb and flow kind of thing. But um, in terms of looking at fight styles and right now there's like this huge uh, tendency to have like short fighters with super tall fighters I've noticed in the past like two weeks of fights there's been a lot of this. Looking at how a fighter is dealing with their opponent's strengths in a very general sense is really instructive and really helpful to look at. So um, I identify pretty quickly a forward fighter, like a knee fighter. In the early rounds, they kind of look like they're really uncomfortable <laughs> and they tend to be shorter. Um, and then they're against someone who's basically trying to like keep them on the end of their strikes, like how I was saying Silla Patai does or something like this. So when I'm watching uh, contemporary Muay Thai, Watching the like narrative of the fight, this is any time you watch Muay Thai, this is interesting, but looking at the narrative of the fight is really interesting. So how does a fighter who starts out a certain way end up taking the lead in rounds three or four? So kind of if they're trying to walk their opponent down, are they taking a bunch of strikes on their way in and then staying in? Are they blocking for the first couple of rounds in order to kind of close this distance and tire someone out? If they're a more rangy backwards fighter, how do they keep that kind of strategy late into the fight when they might be starting to get tired or when someone is burnt, like turning on them really hard? So looking at strategies like that, like how are you dealing with a puncher? How are they dealing with a knee fighter? If they're not as strong in the clinch as their opponent is, how are they snuffing them? If they're better in the clinch uh, than their opponent is, but they're smaller, how are they using their um, strengths or how are they using turns or uh, off balances or things like this in order to um, deal with an opponent's height, range, advantages, size, things like this. So um, looking at the fighters as like silhouettes, so we have like a short fighter versus a tall fighter. How does a short fighter deal with a tall fighter? How does a tall fighter deal with a short fighter? How does a backwards fighter fight against um, a, a Dern fighter? How does a Dern fighter fight against a backwards fighter? Like this kind of stuff. So um, Basically, uh, rather than a more like detailed look at like what their feet are doing, what their hips are doing, stuff like this, looking more at like a narrative structure of like how does this archetype of a fighter go against this archetype of a fighter, um, and how do they when they have like a dominant moment, what do they do immediately after that? So like if you push someone into the ropes and then just kind of let them come back off, that's <laughs> not instructive in the sense of that's what you should do, but that's instructive on what you shouldn't do. And then there are fighters who like when they shove someone into the ropes, get them on the rebound and stuff like this. You can kind of see uh, when you have like eyes for it, you can kind of see uh, the experience that a fighter has or kind of you can uh, take guesses about what their training is like or what their dominance is like based on how they're doing that within the fight. Um, and so you don't necessarily have to watch a fight in terms of like who's winning. Like you don't need to like point like who's in the lead based on points kind of thing. When I watch a fight, I'm looking at who's in the lead in terms of dominance, who's in the lead in terms of like dynamic strikes uh, to the center of the body and this kind of thing. So um, especially if there's an, a fighter who like kind of had something happen to them that they kind of have to come back from. So if they got knocked to the ground or they kind of got a really nice kick to the open side or something like this, how do they respond to that? That's what I look for. Um, it's like, how is this person responding to that? How is this fighter um, staying in the game given that they're like uphill climbing or uh, how are they fighting in late rounds when they're tired and this kind of thing. So those are things that you can watch in uh, contemporary stadium Muay Thai that are really instructive and really helpful uh, for you as a fighter pretty much at like any stage of your development.